Hello YouTubers. I'd like to show you my micro indexer project. This is a general purpose stepper motor control. Its focus is on indexing or dividing a workpiece in the milling machine. Because of the design, nearly any size stepper motor could be used with it. The indexer box has all the control electronics, the Arduino, the LED driver to handle these RGB LEDs for the menu, and it controls the seven segment display. Because software drives everything, you can easily change this, upgrade it, make new ideas. Okay, I'll turn it on so we can see what it looks like with a little life in it. There's our flashing eight display, which is done in software. This version has four functions. There's two for, for moving the workpiece by either divisions or degrees. There's one to set the jogging RPM and one to control micro steps. The functions are selected by turning the control knob, which is a rotary encoder. It's as, and as it steps to each, each menu item, it displays the current contents of that function. Here we're set for 80 RPMs. Here we've selected the zeroth micro step increment. And here we're dividing by 28. This might be for a 28 tooth gear. Here we're turning our workpiece by 90 per press of the run button. Say in addition to the control knob to select the menu, the run button makes things happen. You press it once to get a step and you can change forward or reverse by just pressing and toggling this. If you hold the run button in, you'll get a jog function. Now, of course, obviously, you want to be able to set any number you'd like in here. In my current project, I need a 28 tooth gear, but in my next project, I... so the basic edit function for all the menus is like this. The rotary encoder has a switch on it. Press, we go into edit mode. Now, any turns of the knob will increment or decrement our display. So whatever I want to do here, I can just turn this in and say I want a 43 tooth division for whatever reason. Press it again. It's locked in, written to EEPROM. And now we'll do a step. We'll do a 43, 143rd step. There it is. Not much. So for whatever reason, if you're designing a special wheel gear, we're going to go now, for some reason, we're going to want to step by 90 degrees per press of the run button. As you can see, as, as the control knob selects a menu item, its contents are displayed. And then we press the run button. There we've gone 90 degrees. And we're back home again. The RPM feature, or what I call RPM, sets the jogging speed. When you're in the division function or the degree function, if you hold the button down for a, a long press, it'll, it'll do a jog. And here's where you set it. So currently we're set for an 80 RPM jog. So now if I press and hold the button, You can see I'm jogging at 80 RPMs. Now let's say that's, I want to slow that down. We go into edit mode for RPM. Let's turn it down to something real slow. Here, 10 RPMs. Lock it in. It's an EEPROM. And we'll do our jog again. Now if I was up in, in doing my 43 tooth division and I decide I need to jog it for some reason I just hold the button in and we can jog it around to some spot and then we'll continue pressing it our div division 43 or if we were working at 90 degrees we'll step from there so the jogging, the RPM is, is like a, a global function that uh, mainly affects how fast it's on a long press or a jog. Microstepping, the microstepping menu 
It's currently related to the Big Easy Driver, which is what's inside here. Big Easy Driver provides five microstep options. You go to the default 200, 400, 800, 16, or 3200. And the way I control this is I, I display 0 through 4 on here, which gives me five, five possible combinations. So same way, if editing this, if I want to try a finer microstep, my edit button, I can go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it just cycles through that, through modulo arithmetic in the software. So let's go to 2, which would be 200, 400, this would be 800 steps. Go back up to our division, step again. And you can see it's much softer. I believe there's less torque available, but in this application, I believe torque isn't so much an issue as is the holding power. I think nearly any size workpiece that would fit within the range of this, of a small mill, will be able to be turned by this and essentially held still enough that the gear cutter or milling cutter will cut across the face here, or you might have a piece of round stocking or cut across the face here. It just has to hold it still there, which I believe is, is more, more adequate. I believe there's adequate power here, holding power. Many projects I've seen for milling machine indexers tend to use very heavy duty components, which is fine, but I th in some cases I think it might be a bit of overkill. The workpiece really only has to be held still and move accurately. Once each position is arrived at, there has to be enough holding power for the motor to withstand the milling machine cutting across here or cutting across this way. If you're cutting a flat surface, say a piece of round stock and you want to make four sides on it. You, you could do that by going to degrees. 90 would give you four. Say if you want eight sides, you'd take, turn this down to, oh, let's go down here to 45. Yeah, say you wanted a piece of round stock with, with eight sides on it. So now you're, you make a cut here, step it, make another cut across, make another cut, and so on. The motor has to move the part accurately and be able to hold it while a cut is being made, and I believe a smaller motor is, is plenty for this. Commercial dividing heads are large and heavy, and I think that's just more traditionally the way they were made before electronics were available. So, this is the overall of the uh, micro-indexer. Its a essential claim to fame is a, using a seven-segment display and a rotary encoder to increment the display and, and your stepping counts. They're saved in EEPROM and available as a, at a run switch. The, the motor is connected by the 4-pin DIN, so you can switch in any motor as long as your power supply were adjusted correctly. Very trivial changes inside. The whole project will be documented in a blog on my website. There will be links for the Arduino libraries that were used with it, as well as links to vendors where the various components were purchased. And I'll make the software available and Maybe I'll get some, we can get some comments and get some chatting going on the whole thing. So there it is, the micro-indexer. I hope you'll come to the site, take a look at it, and uh, maybe throw a few comments in. Thanks for watching.